Good morning from freezing cold Florida. I know you guys always make fun of me for saying that, but it's actually like 40 degrees. We are in Crystal River today, and we are heading out with Captain Blake of Hang'em High Charters. So we are on a grouper mission today. Wish us luck, I will see you out there. So on the way out here, we stopped at, oh, crap, I missed one. <laughs> so on the way out here, we stopped at Blake's pinfish traps and loaded up on some pinfish. So we got two wells full of pinfish. There you go, hooked in the throat. And this is actually our second spot. We're in like 23 feet of water only. So we're doing this shallow water grouper fishing, which I've never done before. And at the first spot, we actually caught three keepers and a couple smaller ones. So it is my turn now. I've already missed two fish. On the jig. Nice. Uh-huh. Oh, it's so cute. All right, so this is my first gag grouper of the day. This is what we are after today, but much, much bigger than this little guy. Okay, look at his fins, like on his anal fin and the tail fin. He's got this little bit of blue color to it. So pretty. And See Blake, that? Yep. Blake, why is that blue on So, them? it's the same thing like redfish, how they eat shrimp and they get, they get that iodine in them. That gives the redfish the blue tint. It's the same thing with grouper. I mean, these fish are so shallow that we're, this is, we're still on a grass flat, even though we're in 20 feet of water, and they're eating the shrimp, which then just turns their fins blue. I want a bigger one out of you. That was a little chicken nugget. I'll try, I'll try. Mm, baby killer Blake. Trying to keep them away from her. If I catch all the little ones, maybe the big one will eat, eat her bait. Gosh. Look at you guys, there's gags coming up and chasing pinfish everywhere. Every spot we go to, Blake throws in a handful out of the net. I safe to say they're here, bro. So I'm so actually not gonna, gonna fish because I'm gonna help you in case the one bites. But actually I'm gonna drop it. How big is the one? What's the uh, minimum size so for the one? 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Oh my gosh, got that. Oh. Yes! Oh, that's a good fish too, bro. Oh boy. This is definitely bigger than that last one I caught. I'd say so. It's a little smaller. <laughs> so. Based on the camera, we've been here for less than a minute. Two gag grouper already in the boat. Open up your mouth, I'm trying to let you go, you loser. There you go. Okay. So, he's not a keeper. They gotta be 24 inches, but still a beautiful fish. Going back, catch his big brother. Pretty blue fins on him too. Mm. Your big brother. Just for a bigger one. Yep. Another one, just like that last one, same size almost. Rick, you've never done this type of fishing before, have you? Never. It's so crazy on the west coast compared to our east coast that you guys know where we're from. Is we are out, what, like 10, 12 miles? Uh, 16 right at this moment. We're out 16 miles in 20 feet of water. Like, that's just so insane. The West Coast is just so different from the East Coast of Florida. And I no, I've never done this type of fishing before. It's crazy. But that's why their bottom fishing is so good. 
They have a lot of natural bottom for miles and miles and miles. It's just like mind blowing to think of the vast amount of fish on one spot. Oh! oh came back to the straps, didn't he? That there's just so many fish sitting down there on one rock pile. You know, another good thing is, is since you're, they're so shallow, you don't have to vent any of the fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's they true. They don't nope. float at all. No, they swim down amazing. Well, you're also fishing in such shallow water that, like, the fight is so short. Like, they get to the boat, like, they are so, so green. They're so alive. You probably catch so many of the same fish coming to the same spots, don't you think? Oh, yeah. A grouper are here all year long. Um, the real best time, like, for this inshore fishery is October uh, through December when the water starts cooling down um, and the fish start moving in. But there's always fish here. There's just more this time of year. I mean, the action is instant. Instant. Yeah, there's a lot of little guys. They're kind of beating out the bigger fish right now. You just got to be ready for it. You never know when the, when the big one's going to hit. So if you have a bait that doesn't want to swim down because you want your bait to get down to the bottom, there's so many baits that we've just been switching them out. If you get one that's stubborn and knows what's down there. Come on. Peewee gang. I'm also trying to have mad fish just chase them. Well, many of them came up. <laughs> it's so amazing. Do you think there's just that many small fish getting yeah, to the bait first? I think so. There's just so many fish here that I might have to work through the smaller ones for a minute. It's so fun. Catch all the little ones, then the big ones will come out to play, okay? Catch all the little ones, and then you catch all the big ones. I mean, you gotta her. catch a big one. I'll take that. But I want you to get a big one. No, I want to get a big one too. Oh. Right back to it. Hold on, no, stop. Oh. There, no. What? Oh my gosh, three drive bys in a row. Look, tore up. Well, oh. Your hook doubled back into itself, that's why you didn't hook it. You see that? The hook. It was unable to hook the fish because the hook double backed. This is how it should have been. Swim down. Go make some friends. Come on, baby. Give me a big one. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was so classic. <laughs> Oh, he's gone. Why? Here we go. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> Brooke, oh gosh. Yeah, and you were not expecting the second bite, were you? No. And then it ripped it off. He's like, it was staring. That's a good one. Come good on one, now. Brooke. Oh, yeah. That's a. Oh! No! Gosh darn it. Hook just pulled again? Man, tough luck, girl. That was a good one. That was my biggest one I've hooked. Too much of it, and I feel like it hasn't even done since the Big fish. Big fish. Gosh. There's your redemption. Stay glued. Oh, yeah. Gaffer. Oh, oh yeah. Nice oh, that's a keeper, huh? Oh, yeah. Woo! It's bigger than Victor's. I did it! <laughs> Got you, a you keeper. You for the big one. Yeah, that was it. Now this, you know, fish like this, you know, he's still five feet on the boat, and he's still giving it all he's got. Look at that, baby. This is what we were looking for. A nice keeper gag grouper. It's amazing how fast his color changed when he got in the boat, right? Just starting to turn white. Heck yeah! I like that little mohawk, their dorsal fin. 
We actually ate grouper last night or two nights ago? Last night? Oh no, two nights ago, yeah. We ate um, some grouper two nights ago and it was so amazing and all I can think about is how delicious this fish is gonna be. You see him? Look how white, he's even getting more white now. Yeah. If you guys have never held a grouper before, they have really, really strong like jaws, gill plays, whatever you want to call it. And if you put your hand in there and he wants to squeeze his head hard, that's why sometimes you get rocked by fish and they can like open up their gill plates and like get stuck underneath a rock. And if you put your hand in there and he's not ready to be done fighting, he'll smush your fingers in his gill. Like my hand's not in his gill, it's just like between there. But you gotta be ready for them to pinch your fingers. They're pretty docile once they're on the gill. Sometimes, sometimes I get a little angry. So th what I'm picturing down there is this big rock pile with just grouper all over the place. Think of how many fish we've caught in such a short period of time. There must be so many fish down there. Like if you want to be a standby hunter, you have to apply for it. Oh man, it's a little one that got you in the bottom. Sometimes, sometimes even the smaller ones, they'll make you think that you got a big one at first oh, and then angry. they'll school you and then you get him up and you're like, oh, he's a lot smaller than I thought he was going to be. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Beauty. See ya. Make some great sound effects, I gotta say. <laughs> well, they fight good. That's a clean fish. Fat. Mm. He is fat. Dense. Thick. He'd probably be close, right? But we don't need him. He's close. I'm gonna go. He feels right there. Hey, yeah, 24 and a quarter. They're all hooked so perfectly, huh? It's the beauty of the circle hook. Ah. Bass rod. Just an absolute incredible fishery this is. Very, very neat. Like I knew that he said that we'd probably catch like 60 fish today, but to actually do it is just amazing. Every bait down, as long as your bait swims down, is a fish. Already got Four keepers in the boat? Five keepers, Vic? Four or five. So now Vic's gonna fish and he's really determined to catch a nice big one on artificial. So I'm gonna get behind the camera and let Vic fish now, but beautiful. All right, so Victor just caught like a dozen fish on this right here. Just a mustad bucktail jig with a little paddle tail and he's gone through like five paddle tails already but it is very, very quick to get a bite on this. You're on. Oof. Isn't the thump real? It's egregious. There we go. Petite guy. On the jig, baby. Let go of my tail. This one's very dark, huh? Mm -hmm. I went home. So Blake just caught this fish and he looked over at me thinking that my line was in his fish's mouth, but it He's just got has a bunch of dead lines. This much line and a hook in his throat, and I mean, still eight. It's a good fish too. And it's a keeper. There we go. Got another keeper in the boat. So freaking awesome. Look at that, barely hooked. <laughs> the hooks come right out. And 
Another one. Look at his uh, pinfish in his mouth. Well, at least we're gonna send him off. Am I letting him go? So we already have our limit in the boat. So beautiful keeper fish going back. Two pinfish in his throat. Grouper going back. Are back home that was a very quick trip to the west coast for Victor and I and it is time to fillet up our grouper that we are having for dinner tonight. Alright so today I'm going to use this Dexter 8 inch flexible fillet to fillet up this grouper. So we're gonna start going from the head down around the peck fin. Ooh did you hear all the yeah. air? Yep. All that air came out. Spin them around. Going from the head towards the tail. And I want to give a big thank you to Captain Blake for taking Victor and I out fishing. That was an incredible experience. I started editing the video and I think we actually caught way more fish than we even thought that we did. It was just happening so fast. But what an awesome fishery. And if you guys are interested in going to Crystal River and checking out that fishery, they actually offer multiple different kinds of fishing charters, as well as even scalloping. And that's something that Victor and I need to get back over to the West Coast and do is some scalloping. My family and I used to go all the time, but we haven't gone in a few years. So hopefully next season, that'll be something on the list. What do you think, Vic? Yeah, and it'd be a new area because we've always done steen hatchy, so it'd be nice to explore a new area. So I'm breaking through the pin bones right now. And that fishery, I tell you what, there's more grouper there than water. It seems like it at times. And there's no bycatch, it's just all quality grouper. I'm just working over the rib cage and just slowly making my way down this fish. From the top to the bottom. All the way out to the tail. Ta-da! We did not bleed this fish. And look at how gorgeous white that meat is. That's something that's so great about grouper is they have this beautiful desirable white meat with a very small amount of blood in them. So using the same knife I'm going to go from the tail end towards the head to skin it. And grouper have nice skin and they're pretty easy to skin. This knife is just big enough to go across this fish. Probably would have been better off with a 9 inch flexible fillet. You guys always see me use Dexter Outdoor products and you can always use my code Brook. 20 to save 20%. But right now, until December 15th, you can actually save 25% with my code BCBF25. So all that will be linked in the description as well as a link directly to the knife that I used. I'm gonna finish filleting up the rest of the grouper and then I will see you guys in the kitchen. Actually cool. 
Wow, look what was in his belly. Is that a blue crab? Um, no, that's a pass crab. A pass crab? Yep, see how he has a really small claw? <clears throat> wow, he just ate this thing, huh? Mm-hmm. Crab was in his belly. And I took the cheeks out of the grouper. Um, you can eat the cheeks of the grouper, as well as you could also eat the throats if you wanted to eat the throats of the grouper. Now I will see you guys in the kitchen. <laughs> All right guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight we're going to be baking our grouper as well as baking these cute gold and red potatoes. So the first thing we're gonna start with is seasoning up our fish. And we're gonna start with some garlic infused olive oil by Branch and Vine. I absolutely love this stuff. But just let's take a second to appreciate how beautiful these pieces of grouper look. It almost looks like there's like fat, like a marbling of fat in these fish. Like steak or something. It's absolutely beautiful. And then when we were at the filet table, you could even feel like the oiliness on your hands. Like very, very good fish. So let's get some olive oil on these babies. So basically what I'm gonna try to do tonight is kind of like that recipe that I make on the grill um, in the pans, but instead just in one um, glass baking dish all together. And while I have the bottle out, I'm also going to put this on these potatoes. That's convenient, isn't it? Oh yeah. They were all nice, huh? Yeah, if only I could do that to the fish. I'm gonna just take my hands and just go like this on these guys. So next, after the olive oil, is I have some tomatoes and onions cut up here. And if you guys have seen the recipe that I'm talking about in the pans, we always put tomatoes and onions in the pan. So we're gonna try to replicate that baked in the oven tonight. So just putting tomatoes in anywhere that they can fit. And like most things, this is gonna shrink as it bakes. And then we're gonna take our onions Now we're gonna hit them with some wine. And we're doing the wine first so that it doesn't wash off our seasonings. So now, salt. And at the same time, we're gonna do salt on our potatoes. And then we're gonna do some pepper. Then we're gonna do garlic powder. We're gonna do garlic powder on these. Onion powder. Then we have some beautiful, fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Now, like I always say, whenever I make a fish dish, there's always the people who think that cheese doesn't belong on fish, but I highly disagree. I think cheese belongs on everything. <laughs> so if you don't like cheese, you don't have to do it. You could do breadcrumbs. It also gives it a nice topping. And then lastly, some paprika. And these babies are ready for the oven. Oh, no, I forgot butter. <laughs> Now these babies are ready for the oven now that they got their butter on them. And then the last thing I'm doing to these that's different from this is I'm adding Italian seasoning onto these. These are going in the oven first. I think these are gonna take longer than the fishes. So I'll probably give these an extra like five, seven minutes before the fish goes in. They are very small, but I want them to cook for a long time. So these are going in the oven. Okay, so I'm putting the fish in now, and I think I forgot to mention that my oven is at 375. So fish going in. And 
give the potatoes a little shake. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Man, that smells good. Oh. Looks good too. Mmm. Boy, does that look good. That color is... Something else. That color is gorgeous. My mouth is watering again, and I've already eaten grouper twice this week. And I can't wait to bite into this one. This was probably in the oven for about 40 minutes and then I broiled it at the end for about eight to 10 minutes. And then the potatoes were probably in the oven for like an hour. So let's serve these up. They look absolutely delicious. This grouper is absolutely cooked to perfection. I, I ate grouper um, already twice this week. Victor caught that nice big black off the bridge in the Keys. He cooked it and there was some left and Deb blackened it last night. But every, every dish you make, I mean that was black grouper, this is uh, gag grouper, right? Mm -hmm. But it was cooked totally different and this is cooked to perfection and even though I'm lucky enough to get to eat a lot of fish I don't take any of it for granted this this plate in front of me is is worth so much this this fish is so such fine dining and so delicious and tasty I do not take it for granted just because I get to eat it a lot it's fantastic I love it thank you me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, Brooke, you asked me earlier today what my favorite grouper species is. Might be gag grouper. You guys, look at these flakes coming off of this fish. It's like nothing else. You got these huge, big, juicy flakes, and you get it, all that whiny flavor, the butter, the cheese, and the cheese is not overpowering at all. It's just a really good, flavorful way to eat your fish, and um, I'm happy you tried it inside. Normally, Brooke makes it on the grill, but this is killer as well. This grouper is so white and flaky and absolutely delicious. It's, I love this recipe. Thank you so much for having us over for dinner all the time. I'm, I just love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. That grouper was, was amazing. Whenever you can have fish that's cooked so so well and so flaky, but also retain all of its moisture and not dry out. I think that's really when you have a great piece of fish. And that's like how this was. Everything was perfectly cooked, except for every bite wasn't dried out at all. So it let you have all those flavors and the, the correct texture. It was, it was really good. Thank you. All right, so that was my first time trying this recipe in the oven and it turned out just as good as I think it does on the grill. So if you don't have access to a grill, or maybe it's raining outside and you don't want to grill outside. Try it in the oven. Really, really delicious. I want to give a big thank you to Captain Blake for taking Victor and I fishing again, making this dinner possible. I will have all of his information linked down in the description. And also, I want to give one more shout out. Tomorrow is my dad's birthday and this video is posting tomorrow. So when you guys are watching this video, it'll be my dad's birthday. <laughs> And if you guys didn't know, he watches, I mean, he reads every single comment. So if you guys wanna tell him happy birthday, go ahead and comment down below, happy birthday. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.